If I could start over, this is how I would learn cybersecurity with zero experience. But the main goal is to make sure your resume looks like someone who has experience, even if you just graduated from a bootcamp or a degree and don't have any real work experience yet. You want to show that you have technical experience and are at least able to make it through a technical interview. A lot of companies won't even waste their time talking to a candidate if they see that their resume is very entry level because it has no technical skills or projects or experience. And that is why so many people never get called back for an interview. Because if you think about it from their perspective, they're getting recruiters to set up the interview. They're getting the hiring manager to give one of their employees or direct reports to do the interview. Not to mention come up with questions, write up the interview notes. And this is coming from someone who has personally interviewed people going into cybersecurity roles in my previous jobs. There's hours of work that go into committing to interviewing one candidate. And if a recruiter doesn't think you're worth the time to interview and potentially waste the manager or the interviewer's time, then you're not even going to consider it. That's why you have to make sure that you look like a top-notch candidate to get the attention of these recruiters to have a call back and actually get your foot in the door and be able to prove yourself. And one thing I wanna call out is that for a lot of these kinds of videos, if you watch a video for how to get started in cybersecurity, you know, four or five years ago, one of the first or one of the most important things they're going to tell you is to study for the CompTIA Security Plus. And while I'm not saying that the CompTIA Security Plus isn't relevant anymore, I do think that nowadays with the competitive job market and so many candidates who have a Security Plus, who have their A Plus, Network Plus, Linux Plus, a bunch of certifications on their resume, but no projects, no experience in sight on actual hands-on cybersecurity application, it makes it really hard for employers to overlook that and be able to say, oh, well, they have their security plus, so I'm going to hire them. And that is no longer going to be a common reality for a lot of people. You're going to want to focus on getting the hands-on experience and getting technical projects. Even if you have your security plus, there are tens of thousands of other people who also have their security plus also looking for an entry-level job in cybersecurity. It's not something that makes you as special as it did anymore. Nowadays, if everyone has it, then it kind of becomes the de facto or default baseline that companies and hiring managers are looking for. But what I've personally seen and what I've also heard from you guys from our discussions on a Discord channel, on LinkedIn, is the fact that most people are getting hired because of the skills, projects, and experience on their resume. And that is why when I tell you to get cybersecurity projects on your resume, this is really, really important. I really do hope you're taking this advice to heart. The biggest thing I'm going to focus on is to go all in on a skill-based approach to learning. And nowadays, compared to even five years ago, when I was breaking into cybersecurity, there were nowhere near the amount of hands-on free cybersecurity trainings that you can find online compared to what we had back then. So these are the three free cybersecurity programs I want you to sign up for first. Clicked, Forage, and Cybermillion. I've also included these in my list of free cybersecurity training that you can do for 2025, and I'll link that video down in my description. But essentially, Clicked and Forage provide free job simulation training. For Forage, they do it in a way where companies will host their own job simulations, whether it be JP Morgan, MasterCard, PwC. They'll have some kind of cybersecurity simulation as if you were working on the job, including tasks or tickets or whatever the simulation is requiring. So essentially, you can get cybersecurity job experience for free and put that on your resume. And just getting this technical hands-on experience is going to be a lot more impressive to an employer because when they ask you those behavioral or technical questions that may relate back to a specific topic, you can bring up these experiences because you've actually done them. The second job simulation platform, Clicked, also does something similar, but they focus on shadowing sessions and mini work sprints. So you can sign up to work with an organization that sponsors a work sprint as if you were working in cybersecurity. And again, this is free. So it's pretty crazy that there are more companies that are putting in so much money into just upskilling the cybersecurity workforce, but a lot of companies are doing it in different ways because they're basically working with other course and online training platform companies, sponsoring them and being able to give out free training and find new candidates to hire from those trainings. So it's basically creating their own pipeline of cybersecurity talent that they've already taught the skills that they want to teach them from scratch and being able to hire from that specific candidate pool. So definitely always sign up for these kinds of programs, especially because they're sponsored by companies. For example, Clicked is sponsored by IBM. Forage has many, many corporate partnerships, including the companies that I mentioned, but a lot of them are in the finance and big tech space. And then Cybermillion is an initiative with Accenture and Immersive Labs. So all these are corporate sponsors and companies are pouring in millions of dollars into this. And personally, I think that is the biggest differentiator between these platforms and other popular training platforms like Try Hack Me and Hack the Box, which of course are very, very helpful. And I personally use those when I was starting out in cybersecurity. But essentially your options for training resources and platforms have definitely increased with the number of companies that are putting money into this.
Imagine thousands of job candidates with their Security Plus, maybe a bootcamp, maybe a bachelor's degree, applying for the same entry-level job, which there's already so few of. I've made a lot of videos talking about the problem with entry-level jobs, especially in cybersecurity, but the overall tech sector, and it is not looking pretty. And that is one of the biggest reasons why the job market is so tough right now. So what you can do to make yourself stand out is to put into work with hands-on cybersecurity projects using open source tooling. A lot of the popular cybersecurity tools out there also have free or community editions or student editions or licenses that you can use. So you don't have to pay anything to actually get experience using this tool. And a lot of the big platforms like Splunk, Metasploit, AWS, Portswigger, most of these big platforms not only have free licensing, but they also have free official training that you can take advantage of. You can go onto Splunk, make a free account and watch their free training without ever having to work in an SOC to get SIEM experience. A lot of this is online for free and I would highly recommend you take advantage of it. I've made previous videos on beginner cybersecurity projects that you can work on and to put on your resume. And I can link some of those resources in my description. I also have my cybersecurity technical interview prep course linked in my description. For any of you who are currently interviewing for a cybersecurity position, I really do think this is one of the biggest areas you should be focusing on if you're in the job search. And sorry if it seems like I'm just ranting to you guys, but this is something I hear very often through emails, messages, and DMs from you guys about how you can't find a job. And then when I review your resume, I already see very blatantly why you're not getting a call back from a recruiter or why you send out 100, 200 applications and, and you don't even get a single interview offer. And of course there is a huge rise in ghost jobs just in the past year, but that is a whole nother topic that I've shared my thoughts on on LinkedIn. And I won't go too much in detail here, but if you're someone who has sent out hundreds of applications and you haven't heard anything back, I would 100% redo your resume. Now, another resource I want to share is Simply Learn. Simply Learn has great boot camps and certifications in cybersecurity, and they were also recently reviewed and recommended by Forbes. Simply Learn creates online cybersecurity courses with program partners, including Caltech, the MIT Schwarzman College of Computing, CompTIA, and the CISSP. These range from one month to six month programs that you can take with no experience in cybersecurity to being job ready. And the exact roadmap for the courses and certifications, trainings, and projects to take to get you job ready to start a career in cybersecurity. This is a six month fully online bootcamp that was rated 4.5 stars on SwitchUp. As part of this program, you'll attend live masterclasses delivered by faculty from MIT, as well as complete four industry case studies covered by MIT professors. This along with 25 plus hands-on cybersecurity projects to help boost your technical experience and add onto your resume or project portfolio when you start applying to cybersecurity jobs. The live lessons also covered the latest AI trends and how this impacts cybersecurity roles. You can check out their learner reviews directly on their website, as well as the application process, and selected candidates can begin the program within one to two weeks. The next cohort starts soon, and I'd recommend checking it out in the link in my description if you're interested in learning more. You can also get a 10% off scholarship for the program using my code SANDRA10. And with that, let's get back to the rest of the video. Let me know if it would be helpful to create a resume channel, a resume section on our Discord channel, by the way, feel free to join our Discord channel. It is free, linked in my description. And that is where 6,000 plus of us community members talk about all things cybersecurity careers, getting a job, interview prep, et cetera. But I know a lot of you guys are looking for resume reviews. And although I can't do every single one of them, there are also other members of the Discord community who have volunteered to review resumes as well for people who send them over. Of course, remove any personal email addresses and addresses and you know anything confidential. But another way to do this is to have a mentor look through your resume. And I know I've talked about going to cybersecurity conferences and b-sides before but i've noticed a lot of times for entry-level professionals or even those who are just graduated and looking for a job the way you go about networking is one of the most important things and yet they don't always teach you this in school you should be going to b-sides and cybersecurity conferences and networking events with the goal of finding a mentor i know a lot of people who will go to b-sides and try to network with as many people as possible. They'll talk to 10 people and at the end of it, they may not keep up with any of them because they're not really making any deep connections, talking to one person for five minutes and then jumping to the next person for 10 minutes and just jumping around, trying to meet people, trying to see whose background is what. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't test the waters and meet different people, but after attending a few of these events, that shouldn't be the main goal. Your goal should be to make strong connections with a handful of people and not just trying to network with every single person at the event because that just really won't get you anywhere. It's always going to be quality over quantity. You should be networking until you find one person that you click with that is willing to mentor you. Obviously, you don't have to blatantly ask, will you be my mentor? It doesn't have to be as official as that. 
it's really just around asking questions and especially helpful if you're interested in their actual career and what they're doing for work in whatever niche of cybersecurity that they're in. Another thing that I would do differently is to join recruiting groups for cybersecurity and IT recruiters. So there are lots of communities out there where recruiters are literally pitching their jobs looking for candidates. And I have personally joined one of these Discord channels where, where recruiters are basically saying, hey, I'm looking to fill 10 positions for a small IT company in the UK and they're looking for X, Y, and Z. And this is a direct route into your potential next job. This is different from giving your resume online to an easy apply on LinkedIn or submitting a cold application online. It, you have direct access to a recruiter and if your resume is impressive enough, this recruiter is going to go to bat for you because they get paid a percentage fee if they get a position hired. And if they think that you're a good candidate, then they're going to push you for all the different roles that they have in their network. This is one of the biggest reasons why headhunters and recruiters are so important. And I'll even see candidates on these Discord channels. So I know there are some people who already know about this, but it is still very rare. But some candidates will go on and say, hey, three years of experience, I'm looking for a job in incident response. If anyone has any leads, please let me know. And people actually respond to them and say, hey, I'll DM you. These direct contacts into a job are basically taking the side door. It's not just going through the main entrance, waiting in line where 10,000 people are applying to one job position and it's super competitive, but the side door or sneaking in through a window <laughs> is going through a recruiter or a headhunter who already has a direct point of contact with the hiring manager, with their HR team, and is funneling them direct candidates so you can directly get your resume in front of the hiring manager. Now again, your resume has to look impressive. Hopefully you've done the things I mentioned in the beginning of this video to help yourself stand out. And that's not to say that you should stop applying to job applications online and just wait for a recruiter to do all the work. There's still going to be lift on your end, but one thing I want to call out, some people seem to have the idea in their head that applying to 50 to 100 jobs means that they'll get at least one call back. And that nowadays is not the case with this competitive job market, especially in cybersecurity, IT, especially with all the tech layoffs that have happened and are continuing to happen, even going through this next quarter and into next year. The tech sector is one of the most volatile sectors right now and no one is guaranteed a call back for an interview. And that's why you should be applying to hundreds, thousands of job applications, not just one or two a day. And I personally know people who have done that route. Unless your resume is super spectacular and you're a tech unicorn that knows five coding languages and knows all the cybersecurity tools that companies want you to know for a job, most people aren't going to get an interview offer after just applying to one or two jobs, even 10 to 20 job applications. So apply to jobs as if you're doing a numbers game and you're really focusing on the quantity of job applications that you submit so that you get the best chances of getting hired and moving forward in an interview process. I'll also share my list of preferred job boards for tech, cybersecurity, IT jobs. Nowadays, I typically stay away from the big job boards because they don't often provide me very high quality job applications. I did recently make a post on my LinkedIn sharing these job listings I recommend. So I'll link that post in my description if you're interested in checking it out. And these job boards are free and it is peak hiring season for student internships. So I would highly recommend applying to internships if you're currently a student, honestly, the easiest way to get an entry-level job nowadays is to go from internship to full-time employee conversion. After you graduate college or bootcamp is going to be much, much harder because you're competing with so many different candidates from different areas of life compared to just internships when companies are narrowing it down to students specifically. Your best bet is to try your best to get as many internships as you can and try really hard during that internship so that you can get a full-time return offer after you finish. And one last thing I want to recommend, this is something I technically did when I was starting out in my career, but I would still do this even if I had to start all over over again, and that is to apply to conference scholarships from the big tech companies. For example, Google has a conference scholarship that they provide to students, and basically it'll let you go to different conferences like Grace Hopper, Tapia Conference. Any conference that has a job fair or a career fair is really what you're aiming for. I got my first software engineering internship and my first cybersecurity job from a conference that was paid for through a scholarship. It's another way to directly connect with companies that are hiring that you otherwise may not have even come in contact with if you're just going to local career fairs or your school career fair. And many conferences also have in-person interviews and in-person offers. The conference that I specifically went to is the Grace Hopper Conference. And I was a six-time Grace Hopper attendee as a student looking for a job and as an employee hiring for my past employers. And personally, I think that this conference has really changed my life and the trajectory of my entire career because of the job opportunities I was able to get from that conference. So I would highly, highly recommend looking for conferences in your area, looking out for the big conference scholarships when they open up. Hopefully this was helpful and gave you some insights into 
the job market, what you can do to differentiate yourself. And honestly, just being real with you guys on what it takes to get a job nowadays. I don't think that this competitive job market is going anywhere anytime soon. And that is why it is so important to really focus on skill-based learning and not just stacking your resume with a bunch of certifications and letters behind your name because Honestly, that doesn't help you as much as it will in your early career compared to later on in your career. So focus on getting those skills, the technical experience, the hands-on projects, and not just continuously chasing the next certification, which there's definitely a place for certifications. And I'm not recommending not getting certifications, but I do find that some people take it too far when you're getting three to four certifications before you ever even land that first job. I personally don't think that is 100% necessary. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to join the Discord channel. Don't forget to connect on LinkedIn. I post videos weekly. Let me know if there are any other video topics you would like to see from me that may be helpful. I do think I talked a little bit fast in this video. I know I promised to look out for that, but I think talking about topics like this just kind of makes me go on a roll. So yeah, sorry about that. But now I believe you can adjust the YouTube playback speed a lot more precisely. So feel free to change the playback speed if this video was too fast for you. I post videos weekly. If this video was helpful, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.